Why did I pop fucking wings, you moron? Timings. Ah, and that's what punished me. Oh, v Velid's over there? And again, you knocked me through the heel. G fucking G, man. Oh, this is over. This is so over, it's not even funny. Just let me the fuck out of here. I bubbled! I fucking... I did the bubble. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this damn paladin. <laughs> this damn paladin. See Good God. Do you, you like it? Do you like it? So I'm going to do this a little differently because this one took me over 100 tries. I think I landed somewhere between 100 and 110 tries over two mage towers. I went in overconfident and it humbled me. This was easily the most difficult mage tower we've done to date. We've done about 20 now. And... This was a bitch. This was a bitch. But I want to talk about why it was a bitch and maybe help some people out because it is known as one of the most difficult ones and I think people kind of avoid it. Uh, as many people have pointed out, there aren't many people out there who actually use this mog because they don't have it. Uh, so, one, it's an awesome mog. It's a solid challenge. It's very frustrating. And also, I kind of want to talk about how I think. I can't prove it. But I think Blizzard changed this challenge from last Mage Tower to this Mage Tower as of recording this uh, to and seemingly made it more difficult. So my first 30, uh, 30 tries uh, were done on the previous Mage Tower when I was about 905 item level, which was a little low going in. I'd done the ret challenge, so I was kind of confident uh, going into this, but as it turned out, the prop was a whole different beast. So what I, f I quickly figured out is that you can't really be killed here unless you do some horrendous mistakes, like by the damage in the fight. And Blizzard obviously recognized that and decided to make it about everything else just screwing you up. Uh, knockbacks are more intense and of course the amount of paladin cooldowns means that the last phase with cruel is far more difficult because you need to be surviving like six annihilates where traditionally you don't in any of the other tank challenges and i want to put into context this was the fifth tank challenge that i have done uh we have done four other ones so it was i knew about the fight going into it from that context so in the first week, it became pretty apparent that I couldn't defeat in, uh, the Inquisitor Varus uh, before the four Infernals. Now, Infernals keep knocking you back, and they resurrect, and they continue to knock you back, and then you kill them, and then they resurrect, and they continue to try and knock you off the platform. So four of them at the same time is a big deal, because that means you're just constantly being hammered by things trying to knock you off the platform, and it doesn't buy you any free time to get anything done. So that was a big problem. So I was like, I can't really realistically do this with four Infernals and expect to be able to do the second phase in a reasonable amount of time with the damage that I had on my Paladin. But on about the 15th go, I noticed that Velen, you've got to remember, I do, none of the, I do all of these without a guide. I do them guideless. So some of you will already know some of the things I'm going to bring up. I noticed that Velen did significantly more damage than he usually does. And when I checked it, it was his melee damage. So what, it, what became apparent to me is that you could get Velen into a position where he could attack Varus uh, via melee instead of his smite cast ability. So he casts smite traditionally, but if you put the mob right next to him, he melees them and he does significantly more damage. So with that in mind, I was able to manipulate Varus from the beginning. What you could do is actually engage him and Varus's spells have a maximum range that is smaller than the platform you're on. So if you hit, to hit him and run to the back of the room, he follows you, and you could line it up so that Velen stood directly on top of Varus and melleed him throughout the fight. So for the previous Mage Tower, that was the strategy I was using, and Varus has always been able to wiggle and move around a little bit, particularly if you use the healing orbs because that disorientates him. So he kind of wanders a little bit, which was dangerous because that would move him out of melee range. And every now and again that would happen, but generally speaking, I could keep him on top of Velen for the whole fight, and Velen would add an additional around 9 million damage to the encounter, just on Varus alone, which would allow me to transition into the last phase without four Infernals. So that was my strategy, but I could not get it done in the first Mage Tower. So when I came back, I prepared, I did some gearing, I got about 915 item level, I got a couple of ret trinkets, uh, I got the Umbral Moonglaves, which I was very excited to get because they were a big help for my Guardian Druid challenge, 
and also a ceaseless toxins and the healing trigger that does about a million damage and heals you for about three million which is very handy here uh to throw out there for some extra single target damage that's definitely going into him and also just to heal me up should i need that and just to keep me topped off and safe very nice in the last phase as well so i went into this mage tower really confident that i was going to smash this and it seemed that blizzard had tweaked it so i spent another probably 20 25 tries something like that doing what i was doing previously because i thought oh with all the additional damage i have from gear plus velen maybe we're going to get two infernals and skip the third right if i can get it right but no matter what i did they would separate almost immediately sometimes like they would i would pull virus on top of velen he would stand there for a minute and then when i glanced back they would be completely separated and it looks to me and this continued on through the remainder of my challenges uh, attempts at this challenge is that they have put something in that has tweaked Velen and Varys to separate. So it's whether or not uh, Velen is stood in something that he doesn't like, anything like that, he moves around. And at some points, I've had Velen, as I showed in the intro, end up in a corner of a room. I've had him behind rocks and stuff uh, while doing this challenge for the last 100 tries. I've had Velen literally walk all over the platform regularly. Uh, should he be in something that he doesn't like to be in he tries to avoid that damage in some way and get out of it whereas the previous mage tower he just stood in it and he was fine it was never going to kill him he was unaffected by the aura of reducing hp and he would just melee away now he didn't seem to do that uh not only that i noticed that varus was moving around constantly uh which meant that dragging him to the back now became a complete waste of time so after this was becoming very very obvious i decided to scratch that and have to do it like i'd done the other challenges which is keep virus where he is and go for some control there so that's what i changed my strategy to do <coughs> now this is where the big problems come in i had realized obviously that something had gone on with velen or i believe something went on uh but that didn't stop the problems that it causes that virus now moves around a hell of a lot he chases you he literally will chase you around regularly, uh, which is a big, big problem because you are timing things uh, so that you can get in, to, so you can get out of the aura, uh, the HP reduction aura, at a certain amount of stacks, and then reset them for a certain timing to come back in. And basically, with the prop paladin, I would time it around Seraphim. I would want to be on top of Varus with as many things as possible, with Seraphim up for its best duration in the consecration doing as much damage as i could possibly do into these periods and then when that when i reached my hp stack that i was happy with use the remainder of seraphim to clear the rest of the room and then rinse and repeat that process the problem with virus chasing you is um very quickly you can instantly as you move out like i've got my stacks which was five that i went with on my prop paladin i'm moving out now virus will just follow you around and very quickly you're up to nine uh, for some reason, they seem to tick up faster at various areas of the aura. Uh, or if you're getting higher, they seem to tick faster. So what you'd notice is that it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. <laughs> that would happen all the time. Uh, which means you're going to have to blow a cooldown that you don't need to. You're going to have to use a holy orb to stun him. Or you're going to have to bubble. Or you're going to have to hodge him at a wrong time. Anything like that. And what that does is seriously screw up the timings. Now, why was this happening? So I put a lot of thought to this, and I kind of came up with the idea that Virus actually has charged spell, like a queue of spells that are on independent recharges. So most of them are Mind Crush, which is what he spams at you. Uh, and then he has Drain Life in there, which is the spell you need to interrupt. And on top of that, if you manage to interrupt all of them before one of them's come back, that's when he chases you. That was the theory I had. If I got too many Avengers Shield procs with interrupt, then that was what was causing him to change me, <coughs> to chase me. Turned out not to be the case at all. It was utterly random. It was completely random. He would do it if I hadn't interrupted him barely at all. I'd had no procs. He would still chase me, all these kind of things. So that just turned out to be a part of the fight that you had to deal with. There was nothing you could do about it. Similarly, you had to deal with the fact that Velen would often just move around and there was nothing you could do about it. It was totally at random. Uh, his spell priority system also seems to have been tweaked. What I had three or four times, not a lot by any means, uh, but certainly had during my attempts was him summoning the four adds. He summons these nether horrors that uh, stack a debuff on you to do a lot of damage. They do ticking damage. Uh, is they would sometimes spawn before I'd even finished my first opener. 
which should never happen. Like, the timings of it just should never work out that way. Uh, but they did. Like, they just happen sometimes. And there was nothing you could do about it. So, with all this in mind, this made the challenge significantly more difficult uh, than I expected it to be. And then ended up trying to figure out a strategy. So, here's my strategy for the kill that I went in with. Is I'm going to be doing my utmost to transition at two infernals, which is a godsend if you can manage it. Uh, without using wings because obviously what I really want to do is to be able to pop absolutely everything the minute cruel lands go absolutely crazy on him for the period of time where there's not nether stomps all around the place all that kind of stuff and really work it <coughs> really work it as best I can <coughs> so that was the strategy so how did I do this well, I waited because another error of the, in the encounter is if you can you can stand where virus is going to activate and you can begin immediately, which is nice because you get the consecration from the start and you don't have to run in or anything like that. You can pre-pot nicely, drop a consecration, so that's already ticking, and then go hammering. Uh, that would often lead to the uh, the nether horrors spawning slightly earlier and your seraphim timing would be completely wonky without having to hang on outside of the pool. Uh, and waiting for Seraphim to come back off cooldown, which meant your damage on virus was significantly lower. So what I ended up doing was playing it safe and waiting until the ticks went over that the encounter had actually started. Virus was waiting for me. Everything was good to go. Then I would start. That solved a lot of those problems in the later tries of the randomness of when Nether Horrors would come. But once we did that, that seemed to work out fine. Then it was this Seraphim process. So going in, Seraphim him up, uh, popping wings, Consecration down, throwing shields as much as often now i did consider making a macro that would just automatically fling my shields at varus should i get a proc so that i would not use a shield outside of literally throwing a virus because it's the biggest portion of your damage um the problem i had with that is on occasion you just don't want to make that decision so you could make a macro that does it most of the time but you can use a modifier to say i don't want it to do it this time like throw it like leaving um too many eyes up or should they be grouped up it's far more efficient to actually just shield them and cleave off them and get those things down and out of there but the good thing about using every shield on varus is that it's not only doing huge amounts of dps to him but it's interrupting his mind crush as well making survivability a huge joke in this fight you can lock him down for so long that he doesn't get to cast at you for ages and ages and ages and as i said the spell charge theory that i had got debunked so just constantly interrupting didn't seem to have many issues uh, I was saving Hand of Justice, uh, Hammer of Justice, until he cast Drain Life. Like, I always wanted that during Drain Life. And my process became, as I said earlier, going back in the moment Seraphim came back off cooldown, making sure I had two charges of Shield of the Righteous so that I would get the maximum Seraphim uptime I could, and then just dodging as normal as you do in any of the tank challenges. Now, this only worked in like one out of five tries where Varus didn't chase me or screw something up or do something very, very odd that I hadn't had in any of the tank challenges. And maybe it's a paladin only thing. It didn't happen to me last Mage Tower, but it did happen to me all the time. I mean, four out of five tries, Varus would do something very, very bizarre uh, that wasn't ordinary. And that kind of screwed things up a bit. But once it did go well, that's when we got into the second phase. Now, the second phase, there isn't much to describe here other than you're going ham. Uh, but there is a couple of tips I can give you for people who are doing this. One is to pre-freedom uh, when you know Nether Stomp is coming. Because the biggest danger in this area of the fight for me is Nether Stomp for the Paladin. Once you've got the Infernals managed and you, you, you know the movement pattern to avoid Infernals, uh, then it comes down to Nether Stomp. Now, you do have Divine Steed, but what you're often going to find is Velen moves around a lot, like I talked earlier. Uh, so what you're going to end up doing is trying to get to Velen, because if Velen dies, the challenge is over, just to get a blessed hammer down. So a note here I want to point out, and this was right in phase one and phase two, is the ads all go to Velen. Look, sometimes you can get them to come to you, but most of the time they'll go to Velen, is not to drop consecration on them. This is something that when I spoke with uh, the paladin from our guild who did this world fourth, he was like, well, you should drop consecration. I was like, no, no, no. You drop a blessed hammer and that'll spin in circles and aggro them all as you run to the boss where you get your consecration down for m way more uptime and plus all your shields and heals are buffed in there and you could drop multiple consecrations so what you wanted to do is divine steed around the nether stomps to get to velen to drop a blessed hammer and then get the uh, get cruel to come to you now you had to be careful here because the paladin despite the fact the mobility isn't super amazing 
you can move extremely quickly on Divine Steed. And what this caused was something that I'd never had to deal with with the Demon Hunter, the Guardian, or the Blood DK, or anything like that. Uh, is that Vel uh, if you're not in melee range of Cruel, he will spam Void Bolts at Velen and kill him. Something I'd never seen happen before. Uh, but it happened to me a few times with the Paladin because you can be away from him and gone very, very quickly. Especially if you're, like, panicked a little bit and you're running to get to the ads so they don't kill Velen and your challenge is over. Is you might end up circling around the room and Cruel will just stand still and he will just spam Void Balls. He won't even try and chase you. He'll just stand still and spam Void Balls, uh, which is a big pisser. The final for this I actually did wrong when I killed it. I didn't do it ideally, but what happened is uh, we were on uh, sort of like 2% on Cruel. Um, I was waiting for the next Annihilate, which was going to be the Bubble Annihilate. So basically the strategy was Shield of the Righteous for the first Annihilate, Shield of the Righteous and I have Tear for the second Annihilate, Guarding the Ancient Kings and Shield of the Righteous for the third one. Ardent Defender and whatever you've got, Eye of Tear, uh, should be back by then. Stacking three things on the fourth one. Bubbling the fifth one. And then sort of hoping and praying to Jesus for the sixth one. Was kind of my strategy based on how quickly I was going to kill him. If you're going to have to definitely take the sixth Annihilate, then you're going to have to adjust that. But that's what worked out well for me. All depends on your DPS. Uh, and most importantly, stunning him on cooldown dragging the last part of this fight out it's not a quick portion of the fight by any means it actually takes a good couple of minutes uh which seems like forever when you're doing it so using a uh, hammer of justice on cooldown and also using the healing orbs offensively you don't need the healing as a prop paladin you don't need it so you're using the healing orbs literally to delay annihilates and de delay abilities delay twisted reflections which aren't a big deal for a paladin anyway uh, delay them as much as possible and that's how i managed to get this thing done it was an overwhelming feeling as you're about to see uh but yeah good god almighty what a, what a challenge so happy i did it now uh the legos i had were pride as which was pretty much useless here as against survivability was not a big deal uh whatsoever for the prop paladin here but it's, it's not going to help you when if you miss an annihilate he's going to hit you for like 16 million uh, so that's not going to save you. Uh, and also, I had Uther's Braces, which heal me every time I used uh, Blessings. But the fact is, I had to Blessing preemptively for Nether Stomp, so I was already moving out of it. So I would use Blessing of Freedom. Uh, so the 15% healing from that was kind of negligible. It didn't really come in handy anywhere else. Uh, I didn't need it, that's for damn sure. I would have preferred to have the legs, of course, or a Cephas would have been so... I would have given a lot for a Cephas during this challenge. Uh, but I didn't have it. So there you go. And uh, here's the final few moments of my challenge. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye. I'm running into a problem here of damage. And I've got nothing. And I'm stuck in a thingy. I don't think I can survive the next one. Out of defender. Oh! I've already had to bubble. I've got to kill him now. This is it. Do or die time. Get out of there, freedom. Come on, baby. Just die! Stun. Die! Yes! Yes! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Oh. I can't fucking believe it! Oh my god! I'm fucking shaking! I can't believe it! Oh my god! <sighs> Oh my god. Oh, such a good feeling. God damn. Is Shade on? <laughs> Is he there? Fucking send him a message. Fucking done it. Fuck that challenge. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Oh, my man Chris isn't on. Jesus Christ. Like. <laughs> Jesus.
Oh, that was just the worst thing ever. <laughs> but we got there, man. How many tries did they even have left at the end? I had eight tries left. 812k DPS. Now, obviously, Infernal's backed that out, but fuck me. Oh. God damn. That was something fucking else, that was. Look, I'm... I am actually... I'm not Metson shaking. I'm shaking. God, just... That, I saw the Avengers shield... I saw the shield of the right just on my bar and I was just like, Fuck you! Get the fuck out of here! Oh my god. Let's get rid of this mod because I want to show that shit off. Did you just do it as well? Yeah, you just did it as well. Oh, man. Let's see. 920. Oh, you had shit Legos too, man. Oh, I have tier this 300% increased damage. Oh, that'd be sweet. That'd be sweet, actually. <laughs> the fucking flail. There she blows, baby. Oh, man. All right, the gear I did it in. There you go. 915. Uh, how did them trinkets pay off at the end? Like, total done. Uh, Ceaseless Toxic did 7 million for me, and Unending Hunger did 5. But it was a healing trinket as well, which made it super handy sometimes. Uh, I had Pride as, but I would have given anything for something else. Like, survivability was not the issue there. It's, like, it's not like that helps you against uh, Annihilate and this thing. Oh, man. I thought I was so screwed because I had to use Bubble before an Annihilate, and I was like, there's nothing I've got left for this. I just have to stun him and hope he doesn't cast it. I've just got to lock him down for as long as possible. Oh, dude. That is good feels, man. I had the two beasts. Judgment has a 30% chance to... Re yeah, right, dude. Yeah, fucking right. Yeah, right. The four piece wouldn't have helped me, actually. It wouldn't have helped, which is uh, nice to know. The four piece... Avenger Shield deal 5% reduced damage. Again, Annihilate's hitting so hard. It's because you have 520% by that point. <sighs> oh, man. That feels fucking good. I need to hit something with this. Does the flail, like... I don't know. Does the flail, like, animate properly? I mean, it looks like it does. Ah. <sighs> uh. What a great thing to go to bed with, like, duns. I can't. There's no training dummy there. Hold on. I need to go somewhere with a training dummy. I think that's probably taking me 110 tries. Round about. Around about 110 tries. And most... I, I'm not joking when I say majority of that has been just phase one, just doing massively random shit all the time. It does animate properly. Yeah, it swings it properly. Oh, that's cool, man. That's cool. Epic screenshot required. Ugh. I'm so happy that is done with. That has been harder than anything else I've done in this game. And most frustrating. That's harder than most Mythic Raid bosses for me. Like, on this character, whether I was missing something, like I said, I don't read guides for it, and I felt like what I was doing was, was correct. But... I knew I could do it, which is the thing. I knew I could do it. And that feels good. <sighs> 